Today's after we're going to be learning is Bava Batra, Daf Tzadi Aleph, and we're going to finish today the fifth chapter. The chapter is going to end in an interesting way. We're going to end up on a slew of Agadotot based on this topic that we're going to be talking about right now that we started yesterday about specific things one can't do in Israel. Okay, one we started with not making profits off of people on basic needs like wine and oil and uh, and flour. Now we're going to continue. Tanu Rabbanan. That's a repeat of what we saw yesterday. Here it comes up in a bright time, that before we had, you can't take these, you can't export them. Now we're going to talk about how you can't make money off of them. What we mean by not making money, well, if you have what you're not going to sell them. Well, the point is don't sell to someone who is going to then, don't have a middle person in the, in the, in the deal there where, the wholesaler sells to somebody else who then sells in their in their store to others or like that. No, but the owner should sell directly, and that basically keeps the prices lower. <speaking in Hebrew> he actually did this with wine and with oil. On what basis? Behind Sabalaka Rabbi Yehuda. Oh, we saw Rabbi Yehuda, it should be Rabbi Yehuda ben Betera. We saw this yesterday. He allowed them to do it with wine because. Right, to export wine because we want to get rid of it. So they allowed him also to profit off of it because they wanted, right? They didn't want so many people to actually access wine because it led to all sorts of bad behaviors. The Shemen, why oil? Well, the entree to Rabbi Lazar ben Mishcha. There was tons of oil, and therefore there was no concern that if he would profit off of it by being a middle person here, it, it wouldn't jack up the prices so much for other people. They have plenty of other supply to buy from and probably it would keep his prices down because how much more could he charge if everyone else is charging less? And because of that, it was permitted. Tanu Rabbanan, another bright. Aim is to clean pa'amayim bebetzim. You can't, okay, we're not going to actually be able to translate this just yet, but you can't make money double on eggs. What does it mean? Double? Amar Mari Barmer, Mari. Why his name is the same as his father's name, I don't know, but you can look it up. I didn't have a chance. So he said that Rav and Shmuel disagree. We don't know who said what. Hanamar, one explained this in this passage, means selling one for the price of two, meaning you can't double the price. Okay, this is a little bit strange. What do you mean? Aren't there laws of Ona'a? You can't charge more than one sixth. Of course, you can't charge double. Some will say, well, it was a lot of work involved in transporting eggs also, I guess, because they're so fragile. So because of that, of course, you can, you can always charge for your labor, but you can't charge up to, you know, so therefore regular laws of ona don't apply because you are allowed to charge more because it's your work and all the effort you make, but you can't get up to more than double. Okay, some people say maybe ona is only in big um, expensive things and not on small things. There's a bit of a debate where how this relates to laws of ona Bechanamar tagar le tagar. And the other one says, what does it mean pa'amayim? It means you can't sell to a, the wholesaler can't sell to one person who's then going to sell to another person who's then going to sell it in the shuk. In other words, in the marketplace, you can't have two middle people involved here. Tanu Rabbanan, another brayta, matriim aprakmati avafilu b'shabbat. If all of a sudden there's a huge price drop and all the, the let's say, there's a lot of Jews in the town that this is their business. And all of a sudden the prices drop. It's like when the market falls and everyone goes crazy. So you can start having chauffeur blows and, and maybe fasts and other prayers. Specific, you can start having like a communal prayer kind of thing for this kind of thing, even for prices dropping. And even on Shabbat and Shabbat, generally we don't have these kind of prayers, you know, and, 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 and you know, like a, like a big prayer, we have some problem in the community. We don't do it on Shabbat, but for this kind of thing, it's so serious and affects so many people, you can do it. Now we're going to see Amar Rabbi Yochanan. What are some examples? Kigon Klei Pishtan Bebavel, like linen clothing in Babylonia, because a lot of the Jews were, were linen merchants. Okay, they have like Shmata business. Vit Yayim B'Shem and Be'eretz Yisrael and wine and oil in Israel. Those were the main um, source of income for people. So if the prices all, all of a sudden drop, it's going to be a huge Problem for the whole community. But Amar of Yosef, what's the what's the amount? Like how much do prices go down? But who dissolve the kam asarab shita? The price for what used to be the price for six is now the price for ten. Okay, so that is a big enough change in price, like a forty percent decrease. That 
you can now buy 10 for the price that you could once buy six. Um, and that's going to cause a huge loss for the store owners. Tanu Rabbanan, ein yotzim me'aretz lechutz la'aretz. Okay, now we're going to talk about the issue of you can't leave Israel to go abroad. Okay, like let's say it's more expensive to live in Israel. As many of us know, that actually is an issue. So you can't leave Israel to go outside of Israel. Well, if the prices are that two se'ah cost a sela, which is a lot of money for two se'ah, then you can leave. Okay, but any other thing, okay, now we're going to see it's not exactly like as simple as this says, but if the price all of a sudden go up, it becomes really expensive to live in Israel, then you can leave. But less than that, no. So I'm going to Rabbi Shimon, but Rabbi Shimon says not so clear. Ematai, when does this work? It's only if you don't have money to buy the expensive food. But if you have the money to buy it, can't say it's expensive to live in Israel, but you actually can afford it. Okay, obviously it's a big question. What, can, what does it mean to afford it, not afford it? But they say if you have the money, then even if it's expensive, you have to stay. And now we're going to get into this. It's going to be a big tangent. We're going to get off on all sorts of drush out of the root story. Um, okay, they were very wealthy. They were, they were leaders of the people and they also supported the people. Why did they get punished? They left Israel and that was their whole problem. Shinamal, as it says, and, and they had the money, they could have afforded it, even though it was obviously very expensive. There was a famine, wasn't a lot of food, but there was what to buy, and they had the money to buy. And that's why they shouldn't have left. How do we know that this is what they could be were punished for? And we'll see there's two different opinions like actually about what they did wrong. This is one. Shinamal, well, when Naomi comes back with root, it says there, Vatahom Kola Iralehem, the whole city was, you know, heard them. They, they were coming in, they made a big commotion, Vatomarna, and they said, Hazot know me, is this know me? My Hazot know me. Why it say, is this know me? Why in that language? And this is where in the world of Drashot, we can take a hey and switch it with chet. They're going to basically say, it's not Hazot, it's Chaza, okay, which we're going to see is, did you see? Amar Rabbi Yitzhak Amru, they said, Chazitem know me, did you see know me? Shiatzat me'eretz lechutz la'aretz, ma'al tala, did you see what happened to know me? Who left Israel to go abroad and was punished on account of that. But Amar Rabbi Yitzhak, another thing Rabbi Yitzhak says on that same pasuk, why it say the whole city? Well, what was the whole city doing out at that time that they all saw her come in? This is going to explain two things. First, it's going to explain why they were all out, because they were all at the funeral for the wife of Boaz. She had died specifically on that day. And another thing that we get from this is, This is what people say, For the person dies, already the replacement is there. Okay, so, so here you have his wife died, and already Ruth was on her way into town, ready like the remedy to the, to the problem. So Rabbi Barafuna says in the name of Rav, if San Zeboaz, okay, there's a there's a shofet, one of the judges in the book of Judges is called Ivtsan. It comes up in, in chapter 12, and it doesn't say much about him, but one of the things we see, we're going to see this right now, my Kamashal, and what does it teach you? Why do we want to say that Ivtsan is Boaz? I can exactly have a great explanation, but they're going to say something about Boaz, something negative actually. Ki'id after Rabbi Barafuna, it's, it, this is to teach you something else that Rabbi Barafuna said, the Amar Rabbi Barafuna Amarav, also said in the name of Rav, Mea ve'eslim sh'ta'ot asa Boaz lebana. Boaz made 120 parties for his children. Shne'emal, as it says, okay, and this was said about Ivtsam, but they want to say this was Boaz. Ba'yihilo shloshim banim shloshim banot, he had 30 sons and 30 daughters. Shila chachutza, right, shloshim banot shila chachutza, and the 30 daughters he sent abroad, the sons he kept and he brought 30 daughters-in-law basically from abroad or from somewhere for his sons. And he was the judge for seven years. Okay, that's the, that's the pasuk. That's all it says about Ivtan. Okay, and then he, he rules the people for seven years. So that's the pasuk. And they're basically saying this is about Boaz. It said 120 parties he made for them. 
בכל אחד ואחד עשה שני משתאות. Here we get the drasha about the משתאות, the parties, for each of those 60 children, he made two parties, אחד בבית אבי ואחד בבית חמיד, one in the father's house, one in the father-in-law's house. Okay, some people say this is a, an engagement party and a wedding. Some people say it's when they were born and when they got married. Now here is Boaz's, what he did wrong. He didn't invite Manoach. Amal, Kudana Akara, Bemai Parali. He said, well, he doesn't have any children. Remember, Manoach is the father of Shimsha. But first, his wife is, is Akara. She, they can't have children. So what happened? Well, he said, I'm not going to invite him to my parties because he won't be able to invite me back because I have so many children. He doesn't have any. Tana and the Brighta says, all of them died in his lifetime. Okay, that was his punishment for, for this. And this is what people say, you're going to have in your life 60 kids. What's the point? Okay, the main point of this line is going to be, it's quality versus quantity. Okay, you could have 60 kids. What does it all matter? But in the end, make an effort and have one that's better than all 60. And either what this is saying is, either it's, he was kind of pointing fingers at Manoach, oh, you don't have any children, I'm not going to invite you. And in the end, Manoach had one child who became a hero to the Jewish people. It was a bit of a complicated hero, but Shimshon, who became a hero, and that was all greater than Boaz's children. Some people say, what do you mean? Boaz gave birth to David. And what this is talking about is he had all these 60 children, but it was only later that he had this one child, David, who became the leader. And all of his other 60 all died before their time and then nothing came of it. And again, it was number one, right? His, his punishment was for the, the parties and, and what he said about Manoah. Again, that's all the drasha. And the point is though, in the end, he had David who was one and it's all about you know, how you raise your children, I guess, and, and on what values, and, and that's what's important to have, you know, one child who's amazing rather than many, many children. Obviously, it's interesting, it's all this sugyot, they're talking about the importance of having a lot of children, but this is saying, you know, it's not just about having children, it's about how you raise them. Um, okay, so again, why they wanted to say if Sanders Boaz was to get to this whole thing about Boaz, it's a bit of a critique on Boaz, even though we usually think of Boaz as a, as a strong character. Um, why they want to bring him down, I'm not really sure. Siman. Here's a Siman for the next section. Melech Abraham, Esther Shanim, Shriftan, Nase Levado. Amar Hanan, again, we don't pay too much attention to the Simanim in our learning, but you can write, you'll see in the next sections what these are references to. Amar Hanan, Barab Amarab, Eli Melech, Visamon, Uploni Amoni, Vaavino, me. It is connected between all these people. Perhaps they're all people who help bring about. David's rise to power, Elimelech, um, not that he was so directly involved in this whole thing, Salmon, who was the father of Boaz, Poloni Almoni, who basically redeemed, right, says, I'm, he does the whole Chalitza thing, and I'm not going to marry Ruth, and Fritz are up to marry Boaz, and the father of Naomi, who obviously Naomi was very instrumental in making things happen, they were all the sons of Nachshon ben Aminadav, who was the first one to jump into the water, according to the Midrash, was a very strong character, um, is always a the tov. My Kamash, well, what's this coming to teach you? Well, they're actually using it for something else, which is to talk about Elimelech, who was killed. And what do we see? What Elimelech did was so bad by leaving Israel that he was punished, even though he had Zchut Avot, even though the Kshom ben Aminadav is great, and theoretically his merits should have stood up for um, Elimelech, but it didn't, because what he did was so terrible. Amarav Hanan Barav Amarav, Ime da Avraham Amtelai Bat Karnavo, that is an interesting section when we talk about who was the mother of Avraham, his mother's name was Amtelai, this daughter of Karnavo, okay, obviously this doesn't appear in the Tanakh, and Ime da Haman Amtelai Bat Orevti, and the mother of Haman, actually her first name was the same as the mother of Avraham, was the daughter of Orevti. Right, uh, um, she was the right. She was Amtala, the daughter of Orev. See, Mane, how do you remember which is which? Tame, tame, tahol, tahol. The Orev is a is a non kosher bird, and therefore Haman was the the non kosher one, the tame one, the impure one. And that's why his. That's how you remember his was the one, the daughter of of um, Orev. And Abraham was this was the 
his mother was the daughter of Carnivo. I would say Carnivo with a cup, but with a kuf, it's actually a kosher bird. And that that's what this reference to. Some people have a different bit of a different drashan, what what it, what the tahor is, but we'll leave it at that. Ime de David, the mother of David, and perhaps this is why we're on this, because we were trying about David or Ruth, who ended up giving birth to David, um, and the whole story which led to his birth. Mitzvet bat ad el shema, that was her name. Ime de Shimsha, who we also may, may mention him before in the Manoach, uh, but in the end, he does have a son, Shimshon, and his mother's name is Tzlelponit, and Achte, his sister, is Nashian. So the Gemara asked the obvious question, which you'll be surprised by the answer, but Lamayna, why are you telling us this? Why do we need to know all these mothers' names? Litshuvata Minin, because the Minin, the heretics, when they come and ask and say, hey, your Torah doesn't mention the, the women, maybe they were feminists, I don't know, but but also some of the commentaries say, well, you know, we know Sarah, Rivka, Rachav, Alea. We have other a lot in the kings. By the way, they mention a lot of the mothers' names, and but by these people, it's not mentioned. And right, remember by Shimshon, she's called Eshet Manoach. She doesn't have a name. It's always a very strange thing. He's Manoach, and she's the wife of Manoach, even though she's more the heroine, the heroine in the story, um, or the stronger character. But anyway, it's so that if the Minim come and somehow have something to say, you know, you don't know the women's names or some people say it's it's against the tradition that we don't have an oral tradition that fills in the, the gaps, but here we do, here are the names. But Amarav Hanam Barav Amarav, another thing that he said, right, how did we get to all this, by the way? They're not exactly connected. I mean, we did talk about the beat, but these are all statements of Rav Hanan Barav in the name of Rav. Okay, so that was the, the Simam was for all these things. Mela Abraham, Okay, which was the mother and Esser Shanim. We're going to get to these things right now. So, Amarav Kanam Barava Amarav, Esser Shanim Nechvash Abraham Avinu, for 10 years he was taken captive. Shalosh Bakuta Sheva Bakardu, Ravdimi Minhardi Amatni Ibcha, he says it was the opposite. It was seven in, in Kuta and three in Kardo. Okay, what was he taken captive for? So, the Rashbam says either Chavashon um, Nimrod, Nimrod captured him. Or in the Agadah, Shashoadim Manu, sorry, Uba Agadah, Raiti de Terech Aviv Chavashob Shvashayama Abed Slama. His father took him captive after he broke down the 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 idols of his father in the famous Midrash about that. He broke his father's idols, so his father captured him. So unclear, somebody put him into captivity. And then they say, Amar of Chista, just as an aside, Ivra Zeira de Kuta. Zeu or Kastim, okay, the, 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 um, this area called the Ivra, the area of Kuta, that's or Kastim. Why do you need to know this? So the Rashbam says it's because there the a miracle happened to Avram because he was saved in or Kastim from a fire. Um, that was when he was taken captive. He was thrown into the, the fiery furnace and was saved. And, um, and you're supposed to make a bracha in a place where a miracle happened to your father's. The next statement. That was the, the Siman Niftar. Everyone recognized his greatness. All the great leaders of the of the generation of the different nations said, Go, woe is to the world who lost their leader. And Oilo to the boat who lost its captain. Okay, that he was considered both. Maybe you can think about what the differences are between these, but one is, you know, a manhig, maybe like a ruchani, a spiritual leader, and also a political leader. Okay, he also was like running a ship. Last rasha for the section of Rav Hanan Barav Amarav. Okay, this is in our davening Vayrech David, but it comes up in it's a pasuk in Devarei Yamim because that whole section is taken from there. Afilu reish garguta mishmaya mukminama. Means that God basically is above every ruler, every leader, and even the person in charge of giving out the water from the well, that was was actually he was put in place by God. Okay. The leaders, even right, God is very involved in making sure that things happen. And this is really the theme. I'll already kind of preface it, the theme of what today's stuff is all about, and, and particularly the next section about how, and it's, it's a very important message for the times, the complicated times that we're living through right now, which is that even though we don't always see it, right, but but 
God is behind everything. Okay. It's, and it's, it's a, it's a struggle. It's a struggle in our daily lives to, to understand what's going on right now. Um, and, and how are things working? But this is really what it's all about is that God is behind it. And perhaps I've already kind of prefaced what, what we're going to talk about, um, had to do with leaving Israel, right? When, when, you know, there's a famine, there's rough times, right? Like Elimelech and Machlon and Cleon, right? Without having the full perspective, right? So they say, oh, things are bad, let's leave. Or, or not understanding. It's like we read about a few weeks ago on Prashat Akev about, I was thinking, why did they come up here? Because we're, we're talking about selling and buying and people who sell and buy have wealth and they can afford things. And, and it's it's like what the Torah talks about. Don't think that when you know when things are good and you have wealth and you have things growing properly, you know, don't think that I am behind all of this. But no, it's God who's behind all of this, right? He's the one who's Osechayim. He's the one who helps you in your successes. And in this chapter, we're talking all about the 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 sales and the buying and the this. And don't forget that there's there's God in the picture and that God is making things happen. We're going to see this also with the root story and the whole rise of David to become king is also, right, starting way back from the beginning of Lot and Lot's daughters, right? They gave birth to Moab, right? One of the daughters, which led to Ruth, which led to David, right? You might find God in the most, and maybe this is the most important message for us, in the most unexpected places where it doesn't look like God is involved, but really God is really making all those things happen and has a has a grand plan, which is always hard to, you know, or sometimes harder than other times to see. So here comes the second approach of Elimelech and Machlon and Kluyo. Now they left Israel and we said it was because they shouldn't have left Israel. That's why they were punished. He says, of course not. They were good people. They never would have left. If Even if they had found bran, which is like the worst of the food, they never would have left. So then if they left because they really had nothing to eat, why were they punished? They were leaders and they should have asked for mercy for their people. And they didn't. How do we know that they could have asked for mercy? And, and because of that, they were punished. And Emma. Or how do we know really they, they could have asked and it would have worked? When you cry out, the, the one, there's different interpretations, kibutzayich, but we'll go with one, which is the Rashbam, the one who's mikabetz, the one who can do the ingathering of the exiles, he will yatzilu, he will save you. So another, call out to God and you'll be saved. And they didn't do that. And because of that, they were punished. So now we have another statement. Rabbi Hanna says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, this whole thing about not leaving Israel, okay, going back to that, that's only if money is easy to access, even if fruits are expensive, money is easy to access, well then you have to spend the money and not leave the country. But if it's very hard to get money, even if the prices are cheap, that you could buy four se'ah for a sela. You can still leave if you don't have the money. And it doesn't matter if prices are cheap. If you can't afford it because you don't have money to pay for it, well, then you can leave. And now we have a simam for five statements for Rabbi Yochanan, which are a little bit unrelated, or some of them are, they kind of break up into categories, but they all have the same wording in them. And because of that, they're all strung together here. The simam for them to remember the five is Sela, Poel, Haruva, Talia, Be'an, Malin. Here goes the first one. Da'ama Rabbi Yochanan, Nihirna, Karhavu Kaimin, Arba, Se'in, Besela. Now, they all start like this. Nihirna, I remember when the following thing happened, that you could buy four se'a for a sela, and yet, even though prices were cheap, there were people who were bloated in their stomach out of malnutrition, because they didn't even have an isar to pay for the food. But Amar Rabbi Yochanan, second statement. I remember when people weren't willing to work in the east side of the city, and these were very poor people who had no food, they couldn't even afford bread, and they would die because they would smell and they would want to work on the east side of the city because the wind would come from the west and the smell of the bread of the pito baking on the west where people did have money was wafting over to them and they were dying from that smell because they were so hungry. So people wouldn't work there. Again, those two statements go together because they're both describing a time when there was a terrible, terrible famine or people had no food to eat but, or poverty. 
But Amar Rabbi Yochanan, second set of statements. This is the third, though, of his statements. Here's talking about when things were, when when produce was amazingly rich. Okay, we're going to see what kind of stuff. So the first is about Haruvim, is about um, uh, Carib, where it was so... When someone would crack open a carob, there would be honey flowing down his arms. Okay, a child. They were talking about, and Droi is ro, is ro, oh, um, Dalit and Zion switch. Daroi is the, the, the honey would be dripping from the carob down his arms. But Amar Rabbi Lazar, okay, here's a second statement about about the richness of the food or the deliciousness of the, how amazing the food was, but it's not Rabbi Yochanan. We have five statements for Rabbi Yochanan. This is a, a added statement, not of Rabbi Yochanan, but Rabbi Elazar. Amar Rabbi Elazar, and then we'll get back to the last two of Rabbi Yochanan. Nihir nekad of a natil or of a bistra. I remember when, the days when an orave, a raven, we're back to the raven we talked about before, when with Haman, mother's name, where the a raven would pick up a piece of meat and a big thing of fat would come dripping down from the top of it. It was so much fat, it was so moist inside, so much fat that the fat would come dripping from the top of the wall to the floor. The Amar Rabbi Yochanan, fourth statement of Rabbi Yochanan, I remember when, the days when you would see a young girl and a young boy um, walking in the shuk, the shuka, they'd be 16 or 17 below have a and they wouldn't sin okay they were you know nice like a what do you call it a nice relationship with them without having any sinning involved right this is like remember when okay so the first statements were remember when there were terrible times and then this is remembering when there were good times but i'm a rabbi yochanan last statement is totally different than the others but again the same language and you hear nakat have amrin i remember when they would say in the baby trash if you agree with the Gentiles about their things they say, you're going to fall into their hands. They're going to conquer you. Like, don't think you can assimilate, basically, and, you know, get away with it. No, they're going to end up taking over. And if you expose yourself to them, it really means to bathe with them, which usually I assume this, the idea of exposing comes from, you know, undressing. If you expose yourselves to them, then delay Dilhon. Your stuff will become their stuff. They'll take advantage of that. Okay. Those were five statements of Rabbi Yochanan that we got to because we were talking about famine and leaving Israel. Back to Machlon and Chilion. So Ketiv Machlon and Chilion, these were the two sons of Elimelech who were married to Ruth and Orpah, and they also die, right? They left town and then they die and Elimelech dies in the story of Ruth. Now there's a different pasuk in Debrei Yamim, Chronicles number one, chapter four, where it talks about Yoav and Saraf. It actually lists people from the, the, the tribe of Judah, although there's a bit of a problem with, we'll see the drashan in this pasuk. Anyway, so they say, these are really machlon and chlion. The question is, what were the real names and what were their Fake names, okay? What do they mean, fake names? Well, often in Tanakh, people are given names so that you can darshan them and, and come up with a drasha about them. So when you have people with two different names, the question is, what's the real name and what's their name meant for drashot? So there's a debate between Rav and Shmuel about this. One says, Machlon and Chilion were the real names. Okay, uh, sorry. Now in the Quran, Shman Sarafi Yoash. Yoash shenitya ashum ena geula, saraf shenit chayvu schaifa la makom. Yoash, because they they gave up. Okay, Yoash from Yehush, giving up. They gave up from redemption. They said, oh, God's not going to redeem us. And they just left town, right? This is why the whole idea is about realizing that God is there and don't just give up on God. Leaving Israel when things are tough or basically saying, oh, we give up on God. Saraf shenit chayvu schaifa la makom. Well, they were punished by God said you deserve to be burned for what you did. So one is what they did, and the other name is about what happened to them. And the same thing is going to be with the with the different Trasha we'll get to later, but um, the, the one we're going to get to right now, actually, which is also darshaning. One is kind of what they did, and the other is what happened to them. So Hanamar, the other one said, Yoash v'saraf shman, those are their real names. Lamani kashman machlon v'chilion, so why were they called machlon v'chilion? Machlon shnasu gufa They made their bodies not sacred by leaving Israel, 
right? And going to Chul, Chutz Laaretz, right? Like outside of Israel, Chul. Ve'chilyon, sh'nitzchayvu k'layal l'makom. And chilyon, again, is what happened to them when God just said, you're going to be wiped out. Tan command amar machlon v'chilyon shma. Now we're going to have a bright that says that machlon and chilyon were the real names and the drasha was on Yoash and Sarah. How do we know this? Titania, my dechtiv. And here we're going to dodge on the whole pasuk. Here comes the pasuk in Debrayim. Yokim v'anchei koziva v'yoash v'saraf asher ba'alu l'moa v'yashuvi lechem v'advarim atikim. Hard pasuk to really understand. Again, this was listening people from the Davidic family. The Yokim ze Yoshua, she kim shvualan she gibon. Why is he called Yokim? Because he established, he kept his promise to the people of the Gibonim. If you remember, they dressed up as if they were from far away, but they were really from the seven nations, one of the seven nations. And he ends up having to keep his promise to them, which is he made a, a pact with them, which he wasn't allowed to do, but he did because he didn't realize they were from nearby. And, and that's why he's called. Yokim. Um the he's not though from Sheba David. So people say his mother, Rashbam explains his mother must have been from Sheba David. And the people of Koziba are the people of Givon that went against Yoshua. Okay, they're clearly not from Sheba David. Okay, what this is, why they're mentioned here is a good question. Um Right, the 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 Rashbam just points out they're clearly not from Sheva Yehuda because they're they're not Jewish at all. The Yoash v'Saraf Eli doesn't explain why they're in this pasuk. Yoash v'Saraf Elu Machlon v'Chayon v'Lama Nikashman Yoash v'Saraf. So why you know here you have it. This was the bright we were bringing to prove that Yoash and Saraf are their drasha names. Yoash and Yashum and Geula Saraf and Yitzchagu Shreif Adam Makom is what we saw exactly before. Right, that Yoash they gave up on the redemption and Saraf they were punished, right? They deserve to be uh, burned by God. Asher ba'alu Moab. what does that mean? Well, shenasu nashim Moabiyah, because they married Moabite women. The Yashuvi Lechem, Zorut Moabiyah, right? The Yashuvi Lechem has to do with Beit Lechem. She shava v'nid beka be'beit Lechem Yehuda. Yashuvi Lechem is, right, the nashim, the ba'alu Moabiyah, which is Ruta Moabiyah, she Yashuvi Lechem, that she went back and stuck with Beit Lechem Yehuda, even though she wasn't Jewish to begin with, right? She stuck with them. The Hadvarim Atikim. Here's the big line. What does it mean, Hadvarim Atikim? These are old. Well, Dvarim Halalu Atik Yomaya Amaran. These things were said by the one who lived for, for a long time ago, which is a reference to God. Dichtiv, in other words, this whole thing was all predetermined by God. This is the way things were going to go about. Dichtiv. Matzati David Avdi, Uchtiv Shnebenot Hayachanim Tsaot. It is a drasha. Matzati David Avdi, as if like I found, came from nowhere. But the same root is used for the daughters of the of Lot. Shnebenot Hayachanim Tsaot. Your two daughters that are Nim Tsaot. So what do we see here? That the daughters of Lot were the ones basically caused Moab to be born, which, right, one of them anyway. And that all was predetermined from God. And there you see the connection in the words in the pursuit to connect between David and the Benot Lot and that it was all basically determined by God that this is how things were going to come about. This is how things were going to work. And this is how David was going to be born. And like I said, it's the most unexpected places, right? Where here it was Sin with Lot and, and his daughters, right? They they tricked him into sleeping with them. And, you know, um, so that's how David was came about. So God kind of works in mysterious ways, as we say, and, and unclear ways where you don't always see the whole picture. The next pasuk is, Okay, also a difficult pasuk to really understand. What are the yotzrim? These are the people who create things. But what they really mean here is to reference to Yonadab ben Rechav. These are the sons of Yonadab ben Rechav. His father had made an oath that comes up in a different section, um, the Rashbam mention, mentions it also that, um, where is it, that it's mentioned here, Meow, they said, well, he said the, the destruction is going to come, this is actually a long time before the destruction, but he said there's going to be ultimately a destruction, you shouldn't drink wine and you shouldn't um, build houses on account of the future destruction, and they kept their father's promise, Yotzir, instead of created, from Lin Sol. Lin Sol is to, to observe. They observe the Shua that they're the oath that their father uh, made. 
So they are the Yotzrim, Yoshvei Nitaim. This is Shlomo, Shadomel Lenitia Abamachuto. He was like a little plant that a sapling that grew and he grew with the king with the kingship. Ugdera. What's the Gdera? Zo Sanhedrin, Shegadru Pirzotan, Shal Yisrael. They basically closed in all the breaches, right? They made all these um, fences to basically protect the people from sinning. Who's the one who, with the, now here you get to, we're going to go back to Ruth. She sat with the king in his work. Okay, she saw in the future that Shlomo was going to be born, the grandson of, of, the, of, her, of her grandchild. There's a different pasuk, who you would put it, this is actually by Batsheva. Where when Adonia comes to rebel at the end of David's life, and Bathsheba says, "What happened to Shlomo? He was supposed to be king." It says there they put a, a, a chair for the mother of the king, which you think is Bathsheba, but Rabbi Lazar says it was for the mother of the Malchut that she kind of sat in the chair with God and helped these events to come about. Tanu Rabbanan. Okay, now we're going to end with some sections about, the, and this is going to be connected with. The, the miraculousness of, of, of God. And if we go back to Prashat Akev that I was mentioning, but when you get to the land and, the, and there's fruits and plenty and everything's good, you know, just remember that God made this all happen. So these aren't the psukim from there, but in Bayikra Kafe, it talks about the Shemitah year and how you're going to plant in the, in the Zaratem and Tashana Shmini, Bachatem, Mina Tua Yashan, Ad Shana Chi'it, that you're not going to plant in the seventh year. So what are you going to eat in the eighth year? Well, you're going to eat the old stuff in the eighth year until the stuff grows in the ninth year. So, you're going to eat the old stuff. What does this mean? Below Salamantum. It's not going to be ruined by Salamantum. What is the Salamantum? Am I below Salamantum? Rav Nachman Amar below Ritzimta. Rav Sheshan Amar below Shadifa. Okay, one said, Rav Nachman said it was without these worms that would eat the old stuff. Usually, you know, things get worm infested over time and ruined. Rav Sheshan says, without Shadifa, that's without blight, which is the, you know, they dry out. Okay, so two different types of things that could happen to it. Each one says that's what the Solomon tone is. There's a debate. Tani Kavateh Rav Shesha, Tani Kavateh Rav Nachman. We're going to have a bright to support each one. Tani Kavateh Rav Nachman, Vachaten Yashan. You're going to eat the old. Okay, it's the same pasuk. Yachol Yu Yisrael Metzapim L'Chadash Mepnei Yashan Shakala. You might have thought they thought they would, you're going to wait for the new once the once the old is already destroyed, why would it be destroyed? Because of the worms. Okay, that's destruction. Tamulomar abo tuata. Okay, it says no, no, no. Don't think you're gonna you're gonna not have old, and you're gonna have to wait for the new. No, the old is only gonna be finished once abo tuata. Once the new comes out, you'll still have the old, and it won't be destroyed by these worms. So that's the bright that supports Rav Nachman. Um, the next one, Tanya Kavate de Rav Sheshet, right, Abot Vuata, Ajta Bot Vuata Meila. Until the, the grains, the new grains grow already, only then will you not have any old ones left. That's the miraculousness of this. Um, Tanya Kavate de Rav Sheshet, the bright supporting Rav Sheshet, Vachatemena Fua Yashan. Yachol Yu Yisrael Mitzapin Lechad. It's the same Sukim, but now a different Trasha that's going to support the one about the blight. Yachol Yu Yisrael Mitzapin Lechadash Mepne Yashan Shera. You might have thought that you'll have to wait for the new because the old is right once the old is already bad why bad bad because it dries out then you'll have to wait for the old you'll have to wait for the new there'll be this gap of time it's the same kind of concept it's just instead of kala destroyed because it's eaten up this is ra it turns bad because of the blight try it out tamulomar abotwata again the drasha ends with because it says Abotwata, meaning you will still have the old until the new one grows. You'll still have the old. That will be the miraculous nature of it. Tanu Rabanan. Yashan Noshan. Okay, another drashan is Psukim, and you will eat the Yashan Noshan. Okay, this is actually a different person. This is in the section, the next parak in chapter 26 of Vayikra, it talks about first the, the blessings, and then it gets to the curses, the bad things that will happen to you if you don't follow God. So in the good part, it says, Vachatem yashan noshan, you will eat yashan noshan. Now it's the same root said twice, right? The old. Okay, this again talks about the glory of Israel, that the land of Israel, that the produce there, the older it gets, the more it's aged, the better it is. Okay, we know that's true with some things, not everything. Well, they're going to say here, Amy Eladvarim Shadar Kamiyashnan, 
So I get it, like wine gets better with age, but how do we know the things that generally they're not better aged? Specifically in Israel, they'll be better when they age. That's a again miraculous nature of things. Tamulomar Yashan Noshan, the double language teaches you mikomakom. Everything's going to be better when it ages. Yasham ipne chadash totsiu. What does that mean? Melamed shayu otzarot meleim yashan. You'll take out the old because of the new. What does that mean? Well, you'll have storage houses full of old produce. There'll be so much produce you'll be able to store up and have them totally full. Ugranot leot chadash and your threshing floors will be full of new and you'll want to put it in the in the storage houses and there won't even be room. They'll be so overwhelmed by so much produce that they're going to say, how are we going to take out the old to make room for the new? Okay, in terms of, again, there's just going to be so much plenty here. Everything in Israel is better as it ages, except for three things, dates, beer, and and uh, this hearts enough fish, it was a fish that they would fry. And with that, Hadran Allah HaMocher Tasfina, finish the chapter HaMocher Tasfina. So, like I said before, the chapter's ending, and perhaps because it was all about selling and buying and, and people with wealth, obviously, if they're selling and buying. But what it's trying to say here is don't get overwhelmed by the wealth and think that this is all you. But remember that God is behind everything. God is behind the the, the David Melech and that he became a great king and, and Shlomo and the whole Chupi David, right? God basically made sure that that happened. And in a way that was kind of the unexpected to show you that when, when things are looking bad, just understand that there's a bigger picture out there. Okay, and we talked about not leaving Israel, even when things are tough, right? All these messages ring very strongly today. Um, here they weren't talking about tough in terms of security issues, they were talking more about financial issues, but obviously they're they're interconnected um, and understanding that there's a grand plan behind all of this. And with that, we'll finish our daf, wishing everyone a good day and b'salat tovot.